Hello and welcome to the Tournament Center here at the Magic World Championships held at PAX in Seattle. One of the big themes here at PAX has been Eldrazi monsters. People have been taking pictures of monsters all day. If you want to take a picture of a monster, a true monster, look no further than right here, Seth Manfield. He has lost one match all weekend so far. He is locked and secured for the top four. Seth Manfield, what... What is this weekend like for you so far? I mean, I haven't really absorbed it yet. I've just been trying to play play my matches and you know, it's been it's been amazing. I mean, it's been it's been great. I feel like my confidence has been growing every match basically. Even it doesn't matter who I'm playing against. I'm just, you know, I feel like I'm in I guess as a little bit of a zone, but um, I mean, I, I I couldn't have ever expected this, but I mean, there's so much luck and so much variance that Obviously, I'm on the right end of it uh, right now, but yeah. 12 and 1, you, you get the standard. What, what, you know, this is the deck you guys talked about. You know, you, not only are you going to play it for four rounds today, but if you make top four, which you're going to do, you have to play more rounds, best three out of five, tight sideboard, you know, lots of sideboard decisions. Why did you choose to play Obzon? Well, it's funny. You know, um, Steve Rubin, a uh, good friend of mine and testing partner, going back to Ari Lax's win, however long ago that was, uh, he basically built this Obzan control deck uh, that won the Pro Tour. And ever since then, our team's kind of been the Obzan control team. Uh, we just sort of tuned it. I've gotten a lot of reps with the deck. It's still good. I mean, there's still like, still plays the, the best cards in standard pretty much. And I feel like for a five game set, I feel pretty good. Cause I feel like Obzan control traditionally has the, the best, is best after sideboard. Okay, uh, well, let's, let's take a look at some of the best cards in standard as Seth Manfield called the Obzon control deck list. So talk about some of these cards right here. Sure, so four Courser. I mean, there's a bunch of Jamoka's commands in the format. It's still just too good not to play Courser. It's, it's, an, it's absolutely one of the staple creatures of the deck. It always has been. Nissa's one of the new additions. Some versions play Two, we like two. Some versions play three. It, it can be a little bit slow, and we only want to play three forest in our deck, so we went with two. Um, and then three Den Protector. Den Protector is great in any sort of grind, gr grinding matchup. And again, like Nissa, it's sort of a slow card. Like, you can play four, but I think three is a, solid, a good number. Okay, so let's look at some more of the cards that, that are in here. These are some of the creatures. But then there's there's some bigger creatures. And, and Siege Rhino has really become the mascot yeah. of the deck. I mean, Siege Rhino is just the reason to play the deck. I mean, the, the Life Swing, the Trample, the 4-5, it doesn't even matter that there's Rose and Valor stances. And whatever kills it, you, you're still getting plenty of value. You can return it later. Um, and then uh, uh, Tassiger is basically... You, you just want, like, a Dell spell. Like, there's no reason not to have one, and Tasker is the best one. And, I mean, the activation comes up a reasonable amount where you just play it for one, then you leave one card in your yard, you activate it, and you put your opponent in a really tough spot later in the game. Um, and then and Elspeth. Then, of course, Elspeth. Like, I've heard people say, oh, Elspeth's bad right now. And I'm like, no, like, <laughs> Elspeth's always been very, very good. I mean, don't listen to those people. Listen to Seth Manfield. <laughs> he is 12 and 1. Yeah. I mean, yes. Elspeth just does everything. Like, there's some decks where you just plus it and the, the, you just brick their entire board. Like, game one's against Abzan Aggro. If they don't have, like, hangerback tokens, you just, you just go Elspeth plus, or, you know, sometimes you minus. You kill, you kill a Rhino, you kill a Stormbreath Dragon, you kill a Thunderbreak region, whatever, yeah. Yeah. All right, let's take a look, take a look at some of the tools in the deck. Thoughtseize, Ultimate Price, Bile Blight, one, one each of those, and Hero's Downfall, three there. So we need a certain amount of cheap interactive spells because all of our creatures start at, at three mana, uh, besides the, the Fleece Mains and the Cyborg. So Thoughtseize is just sort of like our... Tur Normally you start with a tap land and then you go like tap land Thoughtseize. It's just sort of... Uh, helps you, you know, your draws smooth out a little bit better. And, I mean, sometimes you just take their best card and you know exactly what's going on and you're playing with perfect information. Thoughtseize is great in every format, so why not play it in standard? Um, ultimate Price, basically, it's not great against Abzan Aggro, but it's great against any of the green decks, Green Devotion, Green Red Dragons. Uh, we, we just need some two-mana removal spells. There's good things about Ultimate Price, 
there's good things about BioBlight. Like BioBlight can kill a Fleece Mane Lion. Um, it can kill Hangerback tokens. So we, it's also a little bit tougher on the mana, so we went one and one. I imagine you get to dial these numbers around a little bit after sideboard. Yeah, uh, we dial them around, and we dial, dial them around based on the metagame too, so. Okay, Hero's Downfall, just one of the all-purpose, d- deals with everything kind of cards. Right, Downfall's just deals with everything, like you said, uh, is our only answer to Planeswalkers in the main deck, so you need to be able to kill Planeswalkers, especially if you're behind, and they go like a Johnny, and normally you don't have anything on board, so you, you, need, you need some downfalls. And, and pe- people might say, well then, you know, three, you know, if you need to deal with Planeswalkers, you only have three, but you do have the Den Protector, so sure. you can you bring have, them back as there's needed. There's so many three mana cards, basically. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, you need some two mana removal spells, even though there's not as strong. Basically. All right, let's, let's keep looking at, at what makes this deck tick. Uh, Obzon Charm, four of, again, a couple of, uh, you know, finely tuned cards, Silence of Believers, Languish, and Track of Your Arrogance. All, all three of these can mop up multiple creatures. Sure. Abzan Charm is great because it's so versatile and it's still good against control, and it kills Mantis Riders. Uh, you, can, you can put counters on your Den Protectors or whatever. It's, it's just the most versatile removal spell slash whatever you want, utility spell. Um, the one, Silence of Believers, that, that was uh, an innovation of Rubens. He top aided the WMCQ last week with one Silence in the main. And uh, n- not many versions play Silence the Believers, but it's really nice against the Abzan Aggro decks like Hangerbacks, uh, cards like that. And yeah, st- ex- exile any number of target creatures. That's a, that's a, exile is a big word in a d- format where everybody's putting Hangerback Walker into their standard deck, regardless of archetype. Yeah, like you get to seven mana and you just go kill two things, and that's great. So, um, and hey. then and then of course Languish is just that's one of the newest additions in the deck. It just makes the deck even better against like the Abzan Aggro decks or what have have you. Just like. Fleece Mane Lion just is a lot less uh, difficult to deal with when you just can play two Languish in your deck. Um, I like the number two. We went with a two, two Languish, one Tragic because Tragic is so good against like Devotion. Devotion didn't really show up, but Tragic is just, it's a, the reason why Devotion's not here, so. Okay, all right, let's keep going. We'll uh, start to look at the mana base that makes this work. Eight Temples, four Windswept Teeth, and an Urborg. Let's take a look at some more of the lands here. Uh, let's take a look at the next set of lands. And then we see the Sandstep Citadel, the Land of War Waste, the Cave of Koilos, five basics. What, what, do you, what, do you like, what kind of land mix are you looking to open up with in this deck? Like, what's your, what's your best mix of lands to open on? I mean, normally you want to st- you want to start on a Citadel or a Scry Land. If you don't have any Scry Lands in your hand, it, your draws just end up really awkward. Uh, so you want to start on a Tap Land. Then you don't mind playing um, a Tap Land on turn two and... Or, you know, you can play an untapped land, but you, you want to start with your Skylands and work your way up to your untapped lands for sure. So you, you kind of like, would, would you say like Skyland, tap land, Thought Sees You, is that, that yeah. kind of the sequence you really want to open on? Exactly. Okay. And then let's take a look. Let's keep moving along. We take a look at the sideboard here. Uh, you know, what, what's the big cards here for you in the sideboard? Uh, Drown okay. in Sorrow, I assume, has a, a pretty clear role against the all those red token decks. Yeah. I mean, any any sort of mono red deck, you're... you're uh, Especially if they're on play, you're disadvantaged game one. So you need, it's just like a hedge. Uh, it's good against any sort of small creature decks that try to go wide against you. And even against like Rabbles, uh, sometimes you need them. Um, and then there's, you know, another tragic for, same thing for Devotion. Uh, it's just the reason why Absent Control used to have a bad matchup against Devotion. Now you have tragic, so. Now, there's a lot of sideboard cards here. Let's take a look. At some more of them, do you expect that your games are just always going to go long and that you're going to find your cyber cards? Because you don't have, you know, really more than two of almost any card. Uh, so you're expecting that you're going to have the time to get set up, find your cards, and just, like, grind your opponent down and, and win the game? Yeah, I mean, traditionally, there's just, like, one of's here, two of's here. Uh, and you just, like, shave numbers or you, you shave a card here or there. Uh, and that's sort of how this deck wins. Every single cyborg card is very important. And when you board a card in, because you're, you have such a, uh, a late game, basically, and the game's going to go long after board and you have Skylands, it's pretty likely that you'll draw your one of, you know, more often than, than you would think. So the Planeswalkers are nice against Control and Mirrors. And then Ugin's just a staple cyborg card. We didn't want it main deck because it's so expensive, but against any sort of Control matchup, it's just great. 
Well, there you have it. He's currently 3-0 at the deck in standard, has potentially as many as three more rounds of standard ahead of him. He's locked for the top four. Seth Manfield, this is Brian David Marshall, signing off from the Tournament Center.